Hello again, and this is Dalia, and this is still chapter two. This will be part three. We have Stefan, and he sounds a lot different from the show. In the show, he's got the 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 brownish looking hair, blondish looking blondish brown hair, and then he has brown eyes. And this one, he's got green eyes. It's kind of strange in the book. The book's completely different than the movie. Okay, let's see where we ended up. Elena had flushed. She could feel it. She struggled to keep her voice steady. Maybe, she said, but I wouldn't buy... Oh, we've already read that part. What happened? Oh, the rabbit hadn't been enough. So, worry about that later. He found his last classroom and sat down. And immediately he felt the presence of that mind again. It glowed at the edge of his consciousness. A golden light, soft and yet vibrant. And for the first time, he could locate the girl it was coming from. She was seated right in front of him. Even as he thought of it, she turned around and he saw her face. It was all he could do to not gasp in shock. Catherine! But of course it couldn't be. Catherine was dead. No one knew that better than he did. Still, the resemblance was uncanny. That pale golden hair, so fair it almost seemed to shimmer. That creamy skin, which had always made him think of swans. Or alabaster, flushing, fainty pink over the cheekbones and the eyes. Catherine's eyes had been a color he had never seen before. Darker than sky blue, as rich as the lapis lazulu in her jeweled headband. This girl had those same eyes, and they were fixed directly on his as she smiled. He looked down from the smile quickly, of all things. He did not want to think about Catherine. He didn't want to look at this girl who reminded him of her. He didn't want to feel her presence any longer. He kept his eyes on the desk, blocking his mind as strongly as he knew how. And at last, slowly, she turned around again. She was hurt. Even through the blocks, he could feel that. He didn't care. In fact, he was glad of it, and he hoped it would keep her away from him. From him. Other than that, he had no feelings about her at all. He kept telling himself this as he sat, the droning voice of the teacher pouring over him unheard. But he could smell a subtle hint of some perfume, violets, he thought, and her slender white neck was bowed over her book the fair hair falling on either side of it. In anger and frustration, he recognized the seductive feeling in his teeth, more a tickling, or a tickling than an ache. It was hunger. Oh, tingling. More than a tickling or a tingling than an ache. It was hunger, a Pacific hunger, and not one he was about to indulge. The teacher was pacing about the room like a ferret asking questions, and Stefan deliberately fixed his attention on the man. At first he was puzzled, for although none of the students knew the answers, the questions kept coming. Then he realized that this was the man's purpose, to shame the students with what they didn't know. Just now he found another victim, a small girl with clusters of red curls and a heart-shaped face. Stefan watched in distaste as the teacher badgered her with questions. She looked wretched as he turned away from her to address the entire class. You see what I mean? You think you're pretty hot. Stuff. You're seniors now, ready to graduate. Well, let me tell you, some of you aren't ready to graduate kindergarten like this. He gestured toward the red-haired girl. No idea about the French Revolution. Thinks Maria Antoinette was a silent film star. Students all around Stefan was shifting uncomfortably. He could feel the resentment in their minds and the humiliation and the fear. They were all afraid of this thin little man with eyes like a weasel, even the husky boys who were taller than he was. All right, let's try another era. The teacher swung back to the same girl he'd been questioning. During the Renaissance, he broke off. You do know what the Renaissance is, don't you? the period between the 13th and the 17th centuries in which Europe 
rediscovered the great ideas of ancient Greece and Rome, the period that produced so many of the Europe, Europe's greatest artists and thinkers. When the girl nodded confusedly, he continued, During the Renaissance, what would students your age be doing at school? Well, any idea at all? Any guesses? The girl swallowed hard. With a weak smile, she said, Playing football? At the ensuing laughter, the teacher's face darkened. Hardly, he snapped, and the classroom quietened. You think this is a joke? Well, in those days, students your age would already be proficient in several languages. They would also have mastered logic, mathematics, astronomy, philosophy, and grammar. They would be ready to go on to a university in which every course was taught in Latin. Football would be absolutely the last thing on. Excuse me. The quiet voice stopped the teacher in mid-language. Everyone turned to stare at Stefan. What? What did you say? I said, excuse me, Stefan repeated, removing his glasses and standing up. But you're wrong. Students in the Renaissance were encouraged to participate in games. They were taught that a healthy body goes with a healthy mind, and they certainly played team sports like cricket and tennis and even football. He turned to the red-haired girl and smiled. She smiled back gratefully. To the teacher, he added, but the most important things they learned were good manners and courtesy. I'm sure your book will tell you that. Students were grinning. The teacher's face was red with blood, and he was sputtering. But Stephen continued to hold his eyes, and after another minute, it was the teacher who looked away. The bell rang, and Stephen put his glasses on quickly, gathered his books. He'd already drawn more attention to himself than he should and he didn't want to have to look at that blonde girl again. Besides, he needed to get out of here quickly. There was a familiar burning sensation in his veins. As he reached the door, someone shouted, Hey, did you? Did they really play football back then? He couldn't help throwing a grin over his shoulder. Oh, yes, yeah, sometimes with the severed heads of prisoners of war. Elena watched him as he went. He deliberately turned away from her. He'd snubbed her on purpose, and in front of Caroline, who'd been watching like a hawk. Tears burned in her eyes, but at that moment only one thought burned in her mind. She'd have him, even if it killed her. If it killed both of them, she'd have him. Uh-huh. So this is the end of part two, and we're getting ready to go to part three. Very interesting. Very different than the show itself because Stefan in the real show liked Elena and was, you know, wanting to be around her, but in the book he's wanting to stay away from her. It's kind of strange. But anyway, the book is a lot different and I'll be reading part three soon. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.